Special guest tonight is awesome. I actually specially requested him. He was accepted into medical school when he was just 16 years old. I couldn't even play Oasis on guitar at 16 years old. Uh, since qualifying as a doctor at the age of 21, he's worked on the Central Coast, in Aboriginal communities and in Ireland. However, you know him best as host of Embarrassing Bodies Down Under. Please welcome the very wonderful Dr. Brad McKay! <laughs> to the run-up. How are you, my friend? Hello, Simon. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, you're very welcome. We get you to jog onto, onto the stage. Keeps me healthy. Just keeps you fit. Keeps me healthy. fit. Yep. So, Embarrassing Bodies Down Under. Yes. Right? Uh, it's, it's kind of like, it's an interesting show because it's about very sensitive topics. There's the doctor, uh, patient confidentiality, and I want to be very sensitive and I want to be very considerate of the people who have showed that stuff. And having said that, what's the grossest thing you've seen? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we're, we're very um, confidential with a, a camera in the room. Yeah, right, everything as much that's as going possible. On. Yeah, but the, the patients that come in are quite open about what's going on and, right. and easy to talk about things. Mm. So um, I suppose one of the, the most profound uh, anatomical I variants... said grossest, Brad. <laughs> I said grossest. I'm being diplomatic. Yeah, good yeah. work. That's uh, why you're a doctor. <laughs> one, of, one of my uh, favourite patients came in saying um, about nine months ago we yeah. I started getting a bit of a, a, a large left testicle right and so uh, about six months ago it was Did about you say I'm very proud of you Good work. you're a man <laughs> finally you are a man yes you are a man just need your testicle well, yeah. maybe both testicles both, should yeah. go to one become a man time, but not one steps. yeah right. so one was about the size of a peach at about the, th the three month mark of growing. Was it ripe yet or? It was, no. it was getting there, yeah, it was getting, it was getting there. there. Right. So by the time he saw me, um, it had become the size of a mango. What? And so he couldn't, he could hardly work. He couldn't drive because his right. sort of like, yeah, balls were getting in the way when <laughs> right. he was driving. That's a medical term, ladies yes, and gentlemen, balls. it is a very <laughs> medical term. <laughs> right. Um, and he, he couldn't wear normal pants, couldn't oh, wear man. underwear, and yeah, it was, was wearing cargo pants, basically, because that was the only thing that he could wear. Cargo pants, is he like camouflage, so it just blends into the background? <laughs> he was just hiding behind trees. Uh, hiding yeah. behind trees. <laughs> yeah, so the poor guy, um, so he, he came in and, and showed all, and it was a massive hydra seal that was uh, growing there. What's so, a hydrocele? So a hydrocele is a, a collection of fluid that collects around the testicle. Right. And so you need to put a needle in and then drain off the fluid. So oh. the testicle's the same size, but it's just this big balloon of, of fluid that's around it that's the problem. Wow. Mm. And so, and then how, like, is that solved now or...? It is solved now, yes. So okay, cool. he's all had it all dealt with and he's able to wear pants again. Oh, yay! Yeah, so it's, it's a good Who thing. Who needs them, I say? <laughs> Uh, this is actually interesting because it, it is serious topics like this, but you were told on the set of Embarrassing Bodies to stop laughing so much. Why did that happen? Well... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well what... His testicle was this big! <laughs> yeah. It wasn't laughing at anyone. No, no, no. no right. One of my favourite patients, um, she came in with a very small chin. Mm -hmm. And so um, and she, she was a beautiful girl anyway, and um, she... <laughs> Talking to her, I was like, well, what are we doing? What's the problem? You've got a small chin, but it, what does this Who really cares, matter? Right. It doesn't really matter. But um, we referred her off to see the, the specialist because she was crying during the consultation because it was so uh, such a problem for her having a small chin for her whole how, life. How old was she? She was about in her mid-20s. Right. Okay. Yeah. So um, and she was doing personal training and trying to get as fit as she could, but then, yeah, still had this problem where she didn't look as, as well as she wanted to. Well, the bigger she got, the smaller her chin would look as exactly, well. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's hard to really grow your chin from yeah, exercise. Yeah, I guess so. So, um, so she went away and had a chin plant, um, a chin implant put in. And, um, yeah, the surgeon ended up using the maximal size because his chin was so small. Right. So she came back into the studio and we had already, like, met and she was coming back in and we just got along like a house on fire when she came back. And I was just looking at her going, oh, my God, your chin is amazing and your face is amazing. And, yeah. like, she was beautiful before, but she was even more beautiful when she came back with right. this whole dynamic that had changed. And so the director just sort of stopped us and went, um, can you stop being so friendly with each other? Oh, really? <laughs> can you stop laughing? Um, and so we had to like redo the take. And, oh, so it was uh, positive it. laughter and, and happiness. But laughter. they wanted you to be like, hmm, now you can think more deeply with that shit. <laughs> Hopefully not stroking. Not stro why? Yeah, yes. well, well, the beard. Yeah, <laughs> surgically removed the beard afterwards, perhaps. But the uh, it actually got. So you were at the Logies, and someone came up to you and asked for advice. Can we say who that is? 
Oh, I'd rather stay, no, keep that anonymous. Okay, all right. Yes, someone, but, uh, so someone, some Australian celebrity that shall remain, no, I won't say his name, <laughs> uh, <laughs> nameless. What, so Who may work in a, a show creating homes. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. uh, but yeah, so um, one, of, one of the uh, celebrities was coming up and asking, oh, Dr. Brad, you're from Embarrassing Bodies. Right. Can I just ask you about my elbow? Right. And I'm like in this public setting and he's oh, like wow. pulling back his sleeve and showing me off, showing off his elbow to me and yeah I'm diagnosing him with repetitive strain injury and tennis elbow and go, yeah, <laughs> right. going through all, all this. So it's, it's an interesting with celebrities where mm. they'll find out where you're from and who you are mm. and then it's open slather once you're a doctor. Right, so after you did that was like... Then we set up a pap smear clinic at oh, the right. Rogies and we got everybody uh, yeah, in right. it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> well as long as you know they can build your, uh, rebuild your bathroom in 24 hours then you know exactly. I think it's a fair Perfect. deal. Perfect. I spoke about the medical marijuana thing at the start of the monologue. Do you have an opinion on that? Oh, my opinion. Do you have any weed on you? No. I <laughs> Not on me, no. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I, my opinion is that if we've got any drugs that, or any chemicals that are at our disposal that are useful for medical treatment, right. then we should use them. Yeah. So I think that there's lots of abuse of marijuana. And so, but, uh, but I certainly think that there's abuse of morphine. There's abuse of other drugs as well. So why should marijuana be different? to other drugs that are around. So I think if it's useful for uh, a, a proper medical condition, mm. I don't see that there's any problem with doing that. Making television more enjoyable, that's pretty... Well, it depends on how bad the television yeah, is well. to start off with. So. Right. <laughs> but yeah, like um, stopping seizures with children, that's yeah. a big right. thing. Um, chronic pain is the big thing with marijuana as well. Mm. So that's where they've really been wanting to bring it in. The, the problem with marijuana is that if you sort of like keep on using it regularly for over six years, mm. then often people will become psychotic. So that's where it's an issue. Right. But if you've got a palliative care patient whose lifespan is going to be two or three years and they're in agony, right. then why not use it? Yeah. That's my opinion. Cool. Awesome. Well, you hear, he loves weed. I think that's what I heard. <laughs> that's, sorry, that's a little unfair. No. But you, <laughs> you're moving to Sydney now. Yep. What's in Sydney for you? I have a job working in Darlinghurst, cool. doing a further study and working in a sexual health clinic there. Cool. Um, HIV medicine is one of my interest areas, um, and so I'm looking at doing further study in that and getting my skills up there. You've got heaps of interest areas because you've I got do. yeah, because yes. you've yeah. Well, you've got uh, well, you've got that, and then there's also an element of psychology that you really like. Do do you have uh, like where did you sort of start? Where was the main passion? Um, well, I decided to do medicine and then I thought, well, what's a fallback option with that? Mm -hmm. And a lot of my friends are putting like medicine, dentistry, veterinarian sciences and then, yeah, like, so, like having all of these medical things to, to do. I had medicine and then I had science arts because I had no idea what else oh, I wanted really? to do. Right. So it was really like that or nothing. Um, if I'd got into science arts, I would have done psychology. So that's really become my, my big interest. And I love being a GP because mm. everything's regarding psychology. Even if somebody's coming in with a broken leg, mm. um, you can still talk about their emotions and how they're feeling about it and what can I do to make your life better. You sound like the best doctor ever. <laughs> Mine just goes here, here's the thing. Go get the thing. I have longer appointments. Times. Yeah, there you go. That's time. awesome. But no, I'm passionate about people, and I, I enjoy talking to people and getting to the bottom of things. Well.